So Google just dropped a major update, Gemini 2.5, and they're calling it their smartest model yet. And yes, the rumors are true. It's crushing everything. People are already using it to build web apps from one-line prompts. The spotlights on Gemini 2.5 Pro Experimental, aka Nebula, and it's already number one on the Arena leaderboard with a record-breaking 40-point lead over Grok 3 and GPT 4.5. Biggest jump that board's ever seen. And get this, on Polymarket, the odds of Gemini winning LMSYS, Chatbot Arena, shot up overnight from 12.6% to 94% while Grok3 tanked from 83.5% down to just 4%. It's the biggest reversal ever recorded there. It's wild, so let's talk about it. If you've been keeping up with Gemini, you'll remember 2.0 Flash Thinking. It was the first to bring in thinking models, that reason, before replying. With 2.5, Google's taken that idea further. They've upgraded the core, improved the training, and baked in those thinking abilities throughout. It's all about handling more complex stuff without tripping up. Oh, and if you see the name Nebula floating around, that's just the code name they tested it under. By the way, Google has mentioned they'll be weaving these thinking model capabilities into all future Gemini models, so 2.5 is really just the next step in a long-term plan for smarter, more context-aware AI. Now, performance-wise, Gemini 2.5 Pro isn't just first overall, it's also topping categories like math, creative writing, multi-turn chats, and more. Compared to GPT 4.5, Claude 3.7, or O3 Mini, the gap is big. On the Arena leaderboard, it jumped over 40 points ahead of the competition, the biggest leap that board's ever seen. It's also claimed a unique number one spot for handling longer queries and following instructions, both of which can be crucial for complex tasks. Users on Reddit are chiming in with all sorts of anecdotes and personal tests. One user even shared how Gemini 2.5 Pro solved a particular pattern recognition puzzle in around 15 seconds, while other advanced models like Grok 3 or Claude 3.7 Sonnet took much longer. Another user praised the model for its ability to generate icons in SVG format. That might sound like a small thing, but trust me, Getting an AI to produce a neat, tidy, vector-based file is still a pretty big deal. Meanwhile, others have tested it in coding, from simple web apps to complicated physics simulations. There was even one prompt about building a side-smitting dinosaur game, and Gemini 2.5 Pro whipped up the executable code from just a single line prompt. Now, as DeepSeek continues grabbing attention with its open source model and surprisingly strong performance on a tight budget, many say DeepSeek's success actually pushed Google to accelerate releases like Gemini 2.5 to stay ahead in this fast-moving AI race. One big reason for all the buzz is that Gemini 2.5 ships with a huge context window, one million tokens. According to Google, it'll soon bump up to 2 million tokens. Another big thing with Gemini 2.5 is that it's natively multimodal. It can handle text, images, audio, video, and code all in one go. You could drop in a picture, ask it about a paragraph, toss in some audio, and link it to a full code base. No switching tools. For devs, that's huge. It means smoother, smarter workflows and way more powerful agent-like behavior. Now, we've also got some official numbers from Google's blog post. They're saying Gemini 2.5 Pro is outperforming competitor models in advanced reasoning. It's at the top of the charts on math benchmarks like AIME 2025 and science benchmarks like GPQA. On Humanity's last exam, a dataset designed by a ton of subject matter experts to test the frontier of human knowledge, it scored 18.8% .8 without any fancy test time methods, like majority voting or external tool usage. Now, that might not sound super high in absolute terms, but among language models, it's state of the art for that particular test category. The fact that it's making such a big splash in math, science, and reasoning tasks is pretty exciting for folks who want an AI that can do more than just chat. Interestingly, some people were expecting support for a Canvas feature, especially for more visual tasks. But as of now, Gemini 2.5 Pro doesn't offer that yet. Coding also gets a lot of love in the announcements. Gemini 2.5 Pro reportedly does a better job than Gemini 2.0 at creating visually compelling web apps 
agentic code applications, code transformation, and code editing. On the Sweebench Verified Test, which is apparently an industry standard for agentic code evaluations, it scored 63.8% with a custom agent setup. Yes, some Reddit users complained about first try failures, but a bunch of them also said the second or third attempt often nails it. Sometimes you just have to be persistent or refine your prompt. We're kind of seeing that same pattern in other advanced models too. Even GPT 4.5 or Claude 3.7 might fumble a code snippet on the first pass, but eventually figure it out with iterative clarifications. Still, some folks have criticized Gemini 2.5 for occasionally giving incorrect info or struggling with simpler tasks, so it's not perfect yet. A lot of this boost probably comes from Google's custom TPUs. They can train and run huge models fast and cheap. That's likely why they're able to offer the 1 million token context for free in AI Studio. You can already try Gemini 2.5 Pro Experimental there, though some users say it still flickers back to 2.0 sometimes. Still, for those who have access, it's blazing fast, spitting out thousands of tokens in seconds. Some users reported that in certain regions, the model doesn't appear unless you're using a VPN. This partial rollout has caused a bit of confusion, but it seems to be slowly expanding to more areas. As for pricing, Google says it's coming soon, likely to support production use. It'll also roll out on Vertex AI for enterprise projects, for now. You can use it for free in AI Studio or in the Gemini app if you're a Gemini Advanced user. Logan Kilpatrick mentioned this is their first experimental model with higher rate limits and upcoming billing, so it's clearly aimed at serious large-scale use. Meanwhile, the AI community is having fun with memes and jokes about how Gemini might reach version 6 before GTA 6 even drops, plus the running gag of telling the model to think really hard or else. It's all part of the hype around this new generation of AI. And just when you think the AI race couldn't get any more intense, OpenAI made a move too. Sam Altman just unveiled a fresh feature for GPT-40, and it's all about next level image generation. He posted on X that the rollout is still happening, so if the images aren't looking great yet, give it some time, but here's the kicker. He says the tech is so good that when he first saw the output, he couldn't believe it was made by AI. That's coming straight from the CEO. According to Altman, they're aiming to give users more creative control over what the model generates. He even said something interesting, that if you want the model to make something a bit edgy or provocative, within reason, it will. But they're keeping a close eye on how people use it making sure the tool respects whatever boundaries society decides are appropriate as we get closer to AGI. That balance between freedom and responsibility seems to be a big part of OpenAI's direction now. There's more than just pretty pictures going on here. GPT-4.0 can now enhance the text that appears within images, symbols, diagrams, structured layouts. It's not just about visuals anymore it's starting to become a proper communication tool. This update also brings multi-turn generation, so you can tweak your image through conversation, which is super handy for things like character design or brand work, where consistency across versions really matters. They've also upgraded its instruction following skills. GPT-40 can now represent between 10 and 20 objects in a single scene, which opens up a lot more flexibility in image composition. And yeah, it supports in-context learning, so you can upload a reference image and GPT-40 will use it as guidance for your results. Pretty powerful stuff. Right now, this new image tool is already available to ChatGPT Plus, Pro, Team, and free users. It's now the default image generator in ChatGPT. Enterprise and education users will get access soon and API support is coming in the next few weeks. So basically everyone's about to get their hands on this. Meanwhile, something cool just popped up from Manus AI. They're pushing what they call Education 2.0. And honestly, it's kind of genius. They've built a learning platform where everything's in one place, interactive, immersive, and super fast. Want to create a fast API course? Done. Everything from the back end to the experience is smooth. But the part that really stands out is their Anki Cards Creator. You can turn any knowledge you've got into spaced repetition flashcards, then download the DOT APKG file and drop it straight into Anki. No annoying setup or tech headaches. 
It's like plug and play learning and if you're the kind of person who likes optimizing how you study or teach, this could be a game changer. So yeah, the AI world is moving fast and it's honestly hard to keep up. What do you think about Gemini 2.5 or OpenAI's visual upgrades in GPT 4.0? Let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this breakdown, don't forget to subscribe, drop a like, and stay tuned for more deep dives like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.